Hola. Uh, I don't know any Spanish. Hola a todo el mundo. Uh, y bienvenidos. In this week's Dev Diary, we'll be talking about the content that we have created for Spain and the different Iberian countries, mainly Castile and Aragon. They are the top runners for this fair formation. First of all, for the redesign of Spain content in the upcoming DLC, we took a bit of a different approach than other countries that have been shown in the previous weeks following this line of thought. Mission trees didn't need a major overhaul as it was already quite developed in Golden Century, covering most of colonization and... Uh -huh. We also decided to put in more effort, more mechanical content instead, okay? On top of that, we also decided to add new unique content linked to new game mechanics, but also older ones such as the Holy Orders for Golden Century owners in order to keep adding more depth to the game as a whole. I tried to add in some not so known not so known chunks of Spanish history to the content because, you know, I have a previous background as a historian. Fantastic! That said, let's get started with the new content for Castile. When we started designing it, we decided that nothing could be more iconic than adding another civil war disaster. Let's go. Infantes of Aragon. National unrest, legitimacy. A civil war in Spain, eh? The Infantes of Aragon were the sons of Fernando Ferran I, the first king of the Trastamara dynasty in Aragon, and therefore cousins of Juan II, king of Castile. His first wife, Maria de Aragon, was their sister. In the age of the... Uh, uh, okay, so what happened? Autonomy change? Wait, what? Oh, that's kind of smelly. Okay. Okay, so you can choose to side with the king or not. I'm not going to read all the events because we might play as Castillo. I don't want to spoil myself, right? Okay, so if you win, you get 20% stop cost for 25 years. The estates get a little curtailed. You get plus one, plus one, plus one. Seems good. But if that's... Isn't that like a good way to like lose uh, Enrique then? First pass will reduce the effects of factionless nobility, making it easy to get rid of earlier, apart from giving a temporary boost to Juan II. But it also comes with a bunch of rebels. The second decision means that the factionless nobility will be empowered, fewer rebels will appear, and it will give Castile early restoration of Union CB on Aragon and Navarra. Why would you do that? You're gonna get it for free anyway. Restoration of Union on Aragon and Navarra, as it means the supremacy of the same line of the Trastamara dynasty over all three countries. But on top of that, the event Isabella of Castile won't be triggered if you decide to back the Infa- OH! To back the Infantas in their fight against the king, thus making it more difficult to have the Iberian wedding event and the peaceful unification of Spain. It's up to the player to decide which path to follow with its own trade-offs. Back the king and face nobility early on, or side with the Infantas and aim for an early military push to form Spain. Although the start of Castile will be troublesome, there will still be the possibility of the Castilian Civil War. We wanted to make it rewarding to get out of it in any of the ways decided, and also we made a minor change in order that early game is a bit more bare. Enrique, the 0, zero, zero is now a 2 zero, one. Okay, so you don't lose 50 prestige at this point. I mean, you're still gonna lose 50, you're still gonna throw them in the well. Now to move on to see what the new mission tree for Castile and then Spain looks like. Okay, I'm just gonna look for permanent modifiers here. Development cost, not development cost modifier. Fire. Very important difference there, ladies and gentlemen. Granada gets state's governing cost negative 5%. Interesting. So what you'd want to do is uh, form the USA as Spain for obvious reasons. That might not be so obvious, but if you have a uh, state governing cost and you get you form, you get the White House, I believe, was also state governing cost. I don't know. Related to these, although not connected to them, we have another set of three missions now in the mission tree that's about the government of the Spanish Empire. The Spanish dollar! Monetary system in Castile in the second half of the 15th century was in chaos! Ah, monetary reform! Spanish dollar! Enabled system of council's mechanic ability, plus two relations, plus one monarch admin skill, and you can revoke privileges regardless of loyalty. Okay, that's cool. What is the system council mechanic ability? How is this mechanic working? It will open up a new 0 to 100 progress bar, the council consensus, which will slowly be refilled. This is cool and all that, but how will this affect Cho'Gath? Um, yeah, that's a good point. I, uh, still figuring that out. Still figuring that out. I think, uh, the matchup between Cho'Gath and, uh, and uh, Darius is gonna be slightly better. Uh, you're still gonna lose, right? But maybe, maybe if the Darius is really bad, you, you might be able to kill him. M maybe, maybe. Numbers is still a work in progress, but the initial design is to make it so that the bar can be filled at 10 years the fastest whilst not progressing at all if monthly average autonomy and monthly average liberty desire are 100%. Yeah, it's admin efficiency, why not? <laughs> and splendid, I like that. And I think it makes sense. That's good. And it's only 5%. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> Counter consensus will give an increasing escalating effect, giving you monthly and admin efficiency. Uh -huh. Once you have a hundred council consensus, you may be able to, you may be able of spending that amount in one of the three government. Uh, why would you do that? This better be good. After clicking the button, you will get plus one monarch power. Of the, okay, 
No, no, I see why you would do that. At an event similar to the estate agendas will trigger, upon which you might be able to pick one of the councils that branch to support for 10 years, getting an additional... Oh, negative one interest per annum. That's a lot. And plus one missionary. That's a lot. And it takes 10 years to fill up, so then you can click it again, provided you're growing as fast as you possibly can. Five years, 10 from zero to 100. Oh, it all costs 50. Oh, then you might even use it in the late game. Look at that. Wait, what? Oh, you can choose one of the following if you click the admin one. Oh, there's more of the, I thought these were the three. Okay, let's see. Council of State, plus two diplorep. Okay, now we get to the good bit. When plus one missionary is a lot, how much is not a lot? I, I said the uh, interest per annum is a lot. Most of modifiers for interest per annum are uh, 0.50 or 0.25. 15% na na manpower recovery speed, sleep. Plus one yearly opposition? Oh, or plus one year, okay. The military ones, they're a thing. UI is the work in progress, but in the last pick you got the current design for the, oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Wow, that looks pretty. And that Tethios, tier five cover reform. Tethio fourth, uh, fourth limit fraction, 25. Cool. That's a lot. 30% shock damage received as a special unit. And they didn't add reinforce speed. Yes, it's a usable special unit. Let's go. <laughs> this unit might be recruited from provinces in the Iberian culture group and their availability. Ah, okay. Okay, this is cool. Availability will be increased by the armor tradition that Spain has at the moment. So that means you'll, you'll be able to recruit the double the amount of tertiaries if your army tradition is 100. About its combat performance, these units will have this. Have at the start the same modifier as Spain Tarsio's age bonus, negative 30% shock damage. Which that means that we'll be changing Spain's age bonus, although it is not the same. Oh, Spain's so OP, man. What the hell? But wait, this is not the end of the Spanish road. There is another mission. Refine the Tarsios, which will allow you to modernize your Tarsios if you have a fixed amount of Tarsios. Right now, it's 60, but this may change. And either 75% armor tradition, armor professionalism, and <laughs> luck with that, or 90 tradition, giving them the following effects on top until the end of the game allowing Spain to extend the dominance of Tercios on the battlefield for a period longer than historically. Ha! Sick! 10% morale damage received, reinforced speed, and army drill game modifier. That's so cool. 10% morale damage is, You guys are, I think, maybe overrating it a little bit. But this is a nice Let's added move. bonus, but the, the, the main lion's share is still gonna be the shock damage received, right? This is really cool. I like this. Wow. And you get so many of them too. Like you can fill your entire front line with Tethios. That's sick. I mean, it makes sense. Like Tethios kicked ass. Pretty much a lot. Like I didn't like almost everyone copy copy that formation as well in the time period. Subjugation of the low countries. Culture conversion. Co hey, but Tom, <laughs> I disagree with this. My Dutch heart is revolting. I have to listen to some Dutch patriotic music to keep reading this. Aims to connect your dominions in Italy and maybe cursed Netherlands. That is cursed, which will now grant a big reward if completed. Castile gets universal monarchy until the end of the game. Given the following if- No! 25! 25! 25! But- uh, <laughs> That makes them the best at everything though. <laughs> Governing capacity month. We've also reworked a bit the Austrian branch flows and links and added a strong reward for completing it. Again, numbers are not final. Okay, numbers are not final. 25 is a lot. That's the biggest mission reward in the game for diplomatic annexation cost reduction. Interesting reward here. Universal monarchy, and then you get universal empire. Plus two diplo rep. Castile gets a universal empire, plus two diplo rep. Imperial authority growth. Years for personal union integration, negative 25. That's so, that's so interesting. I think that's really cool. Uh, and all power cost, negative 5%. If you manage to complete all branching missions of conquest, and uh, uh, yeah, okay. Expansion of the Realis Atarazanas. Treasure fleet income plus 100%. Sick. Galleon force limit? And caravel force limit. What the hell is galleon force limit? Like you can build extra galleons whilst the- Here you have a new feature that we are adding to the upcoming DLC. Naval special units. A few countries will get them, on top of the three special, new special units that we've already presented. Samurai, Musketeers, and Tertios. And these are the caravels and galleons that are mentioned here. Caraval ship, ship trade power, ship naval attrition, and fleet movement speed. Sick. Galleon ship, heavy ship combat ability, artillery fire, and hull size. Oh my god. Okay, so that's like a heavy, but it's twice as extensive. Royal Navy in shambles. They said a few countries will get them. So maybe I'm assuming England will also get 
some special naval units, but Spain will be able to get more of them. And Spain is already like on par with England on the Navy because they have artillery fire in their national ideas. Okay, goods produced. Ya la la la, monastic orders have been changed a little bit. Uh, here I've got to say that we've not added more countries to the colonial nations in America, to be honest with you, it's in our bank log, fell outside the scope of the upcoming DLC, so we'll have to wait for a future moment. No, another DLC confirmed. <laughs> Job security, let's go. Local state maintenance modifier, local tax, local governing cost. Wait, so you get to choose? Med account orders, dip. Plus one institution, girl. What, you mean like always? What does that mean? All right, they have new shields, fantastic. Aragon has things. All right, let's. All right, you get. Uh, you get Eric. Fantastic. Wait, what? You can go peasant republic as what? Wait, wait, hold on. What the hell? Iberian struggle. Yes, yes, yes. The ability in Aragon have begun to strictly enforce rules that tie peasants to the land, and this, combined with the stricter enforcement of seigneurial rights in general, has led to unrest among the peasants. Forest peasants strongly support open rebellion, whilst better off favor appealing to us for reforms at the end of seigneurial abuse. It'll be an excellent opportunity to gain the support of peasants, as we are. Uh, we will proclaim Aragonese peasant republic. Public. Syndicate Ramenta. Local minimum autonomy. Wait, it doesn't actually make you a republic then? Or what? No, no, it does turn you into a peasant republic. Okay, okay, fair enough. Afterwards, you'll be focused on the conquest and expansion path. Yeah. Number of flagship goes up. Consulate of the sea. Does what it does. Oh, you can put. Oh, this is cool. You, you, so you get trade posts, but you don't get increased governing costs. Right? Progressive expansion impact. Cool. Ship cannons. Cool, cool, cool. May rate coasts. <laughs> but only for 20 years. Coastal Raiding Range plus two. Wow, that should be a mission for, for the Barbary States, something like this. That's cool, it's unique, I like it. Aragon gets maritime administration till the end of the game. Max promoted cultures, golf cap, overextension impact, modifier negative five, cool. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, oh no, oh no. Don't make me do this again. No, 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 no. Por que, por que no? Okay, uh, Aragon gets Industrious and Era for 20 years. Production efficiency goes up. And, oh, look at this. It's development cost modifier. Aragon gets Golden Century for 100 years, which is basically a little bit like a Golden Age. Pretty good. Finally, if you foreign Spain is Aragon, what will happen is that you will keep the Aragonese 3 and you will get the trade and colonization branch of the lower half, making it for a different mission tree than that of Castilian Spain. Okay, so you don't get that whole Universal Empire stuff. Although I'm pretty sure there's some way to get that. Finally, we rework the Spanish ideas to make it work a little bit better with all the other content. Reign in the Cortes. Negative five reduced absolutism from... That's really cool because a lot of privileges only give negative five. Still the 15% morale, still the plus one artillery fire, and still the 5% discipline. It's so sick, dude. That's, that's such a sick idea. What's this? Wait, what? What? Why is Portugal blue? No, change it back! What? Speaking of Spanish ideals, we are currently having a debate in the team what to do with artillery fire modifier as to keep them in different ideas that's a replacement something else. On this topic, we'd like to hear your opinion about- No! I mean, yes, no. Give Smolensk an artillery fire. Wait, it, artillery fire is a really cool modifier because it works in a very cool, unique way. It's really powerful and it, 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 it's really nice, it's really cool. But Smolensk doesn't have it, and Smolensk needs to get it because Smolensk has equal cannons to Spain now. Like they have literally equal cannons. If you get Spanish cannons, you line them all up. You get Smolensk cannons, you line them all up. And Smolensk cannons should be the best in the game. So they also need plus one artillery fire. Plus one is so much. So maybe I'm usually pretty much against halving numbers because I think big numbers are big big booty but what about the other Iberian countries we also had a new country for Portugal and Nevada but we're going to talk about that in a couple of weeks alongside with other countries that we are not considered to be part of the core of the upcoming DLC but trust me we're not diminishing Portugal's role in the early modern age in fact this is also a good opportunity to share with us which tweaks you would want to see I would not like to see them blue as we are trying to polish it in a new content what I can show now is a sneak peek of something that the Portuguese players have been asking for a while and that we have changed for good. But why? Who asked for the- Portugal asked for the- But why would you- Green is Republic, blue is Monarch- Are you- What the- I got a pop of vein! You can't just randomly start changing colors. <laughs> Thank God, blue. Okay, I guess people from Portugal wanted to be blue. Where's the, oh, hey, here we go. Age of Discovery. It's Tertio time. Age of Absolutism. 
hate you for me. Yeah, except now, <laughs> it's Tertia time all the time. And they only get more powerful. 